Ventura County Jane Doe, 1980. The Ventura County Jane Doe was found brutalized and abandoned at the edge of a high school parking lot just hours after her death in 1980. The police believe it's possible that she was abducted from Los Angeles or a nearby county such as Kern, Ventura, or Tulare. It is theorized that she was taken to the scene where she was found from a significant distance, so it's unlikely that we're looking for a missing person from Ventura County at all. It's possible she may have been hitchhiking near the College of the Sequoias in California. Sadly, she was physically assaulted, stabbed, and strangled. It is believed she was five months pregnant at the time. The young woman's child, a boy, also perished. Unlike many of these cases, her identity went unsolved, but her murderer is serving life in prison without the possibility of parole. Wilson Choas murdered both Ardo and a woman named Shirley Suse. Shirley also previously went unidentified, but they did find her identity. He denied knowing their names and made no effort to help in identifying the young women whose lives he took. Because this is about the young women he brutalized, I may follow up in a video about him in the future. But suffice it to say, he was not a good person. He was sentenced to life in prison in 1980, and these murders were not his first tangle with the law. This young Doe's DNA has been processed through the DNA Doe Project, but they have so far been unable to identify her. She was of Native American and Hispanic descent. She was small in stature, only around 5 foot 1. She may have been as tall as 5 foot 3. She weighed about 110 to 115 pounds. The list of her possible surnames is located on your screen. They include family members in southern Texas. There are quite a few in the San Antonio Brownsville area. There were also quite a few matches in central Mexico with the surnames Aguirre, Alvarez, Ayala, Chavez, Escovito, Esquival, Perez, Rubio, and Zavala. I apologize for not listing all of the names. Rather than forcing you all to listen to my mispronunciations, I've listed them on the screen. These names also included northern New Mexico, southern Colorado, and the surnames Cordova, Gallegos, Martin Serrano, Martinez, Montoya, and Romero. It also lists indigenous California, as well as Guatemala. She had brown eyes and black hair that was bleach blonde at the end. She had given birth at least once before because she had an episiotomy scar. Any child she had would be at least 42 years old now, but likely 43 years old or older. She had shaved her natural eyebrows and penciled them in. She also wore what is described as a large amount of mascara. There are post-mortem photos available online if they may help with identification. I don't show those on the channel. She was born between the years of 1950 and 1965. She has gone unidentified for 41 years. If you have any information at all on her case, please call the number on your screen. The Hacienda Heights, John Doe, 1972, also known as John Doe number 158. Screams and gunfire erupted on November 5, 1972, very early in the day, yet no one bothered to call the police. Sadly, it would be about eight hours before anyone discovered the body of this doe at 10 a.m. He was wearing embroidered jeans and a peace sign earring. It was described as a bloody and gruesome scene. As a result, no one saw anything and there were no clues as to who took the young man's life. Even the genericness of his name seems brutal. He was simply known as John Doe number 158 for years, a nameless victim. A strange thing, however, is that less than a year later, close by, a teenage girl would be found also wearing peace symbol earrings. Possibly a coincidence, possibly not. Her case will be the next one covered. As frustrating as can be, the police admitted it's a valid lead, but nobody explored it. They defended themselves by saying if you don't know who the victim is, it makes it hard to tell. Detectives did try to find John's real name. They sent his information to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, but so far no leads have come. It appears that his body was cremated the following year, but hair clippings and other evidence was collected first. So far, he is sitting in the missing person's DNA database awaiting a match. There's no information why they didn't try to make an attempt through GEDmatch. The police were quoted as saying it's a waiting game. The police defended their inaction, saying that most homicide investigators will agree that the single most important lead in a homicide case is the identity of the victim. John was a white man between the ages of 19 and 21. 
He was around six foot tall and weighed 175 pounds. He had previously had surgery on his right knee and also near his tailbone. He had a small yellow metal earring with a peace symbol and a white metal chain necklace with black beads. A pair of yellow metal framed eyeglasses were found near the scene. They may have belonged to him. If the age estimate is correct, and it's important to note they aren't always, he was born in the year 1952 to 1954. He has gone unidentified for 49 years. The La Habra Heights, Jane Doe, 1973. A horseback rider discovered the victim lying in a huge open grave. It was about 12 feet deep, 69 inches long, and 27 inches wide, in a hilly area near a fire road east of Skyline Drive. She was a teenage girl wearing peace symbol earrings. La Habra Heights and Hacienda Heights are only about four miles apart in location. A comparison of the earrings can be found on the screen. There's no indication if these two are in any way related to one another. Like the previous John Doe, she was also shot. She was around 14 to 20 years old when she was killed, five foot two to five foot three inches tall and around 100 pounds. She had been murdered one to three months prior to being found. She had light brown shoulder length hair. Her lower left molar appears to have been extracted approximately four months before her death, and the lower right second molar was extracted about six months before. There is no evidence of fillings or any other dental work. She was wearing Sears and Roebuck Company corduroy pants with the initials SJ on the right rear pocket, and she wore a size six shoe. Her gold metal earrings had a peace symbol and a blue stone in them. She was most likely born between 1953 and 1959. She has gone unidentified for 48 years. If you have any information on this case, please call the number on your screen. The Tulsa John Doe, 1988. A man was letting his dogs run free near his property in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. This was a normal daily occurrence. However, this time his dogs brought back human bones. This was in August of 1988. The man would go on to say the dogs had brought some bones into the garden over here. You could tell just by looking at it, it was a human bone. He went on to say he had lived his entire life in that area and it was a very shocking thing that stuck with him. While it's obviously not as extreme as what happened to the Wilson John Doe, it somewhat highlights how much of an impact it has on everybody. It victimizes those who find them, anybody who witnessed anything, and the families left behind. Tulsa County Sheriff's deputies responded and they searched, finding other remains scattered across the property. John Doe was found in a nearby creek. He had been there at least a few weeks. Animals had actively scattered his bones. They were unable to determine his cause of death. They tried to match his missing remains to someone from the area and were unable to do so. A clay sculpture was made of his skull to approximate how he might have looked. A DNA profile was created in order to match potential relatives but it appears they've only tried the FBI missing person's DNA database. That's why it's so important if you're missing a loved one that you submit your DNA there. If anyone has personal knowledge as to why they're not searching GEDmatch for a lot of these, I would love to actually know. It's entirely possible that the type of DNA or there is some reason that they're not doing so. I know that I've personally used it so you don't have to be a genetic genealogist to be able to see who matches with somebody. As I'm sure you can tell on here, I find it profoundly frustrating that they're not using GEDmatch. The Tulsa John Doe appears to have been a black male between the ages of 50 and 80. He wore upper dentures and he may have suffered from a shoulder or spinal slump. They were unable to determine his cause of death and it may have been natural. If you recognize him, you're asked to call the Tulsa County Sheriff's Office at the number on your screen. His projected date of birth is 1908 to 1938. He's gone unidentified for 33 years. The Wilson John Doe, 1993, Wilson, North Carolina. The Wilson John Doe was found by fishermen at the Buckhorn Reservoir. He was shot in the head twice, decapitated, and then weighed down with a bag of rocks to keep him from being discovered. The recreation of a skull is approximate because they were unfortunately not able to find his lower mandible, so his jawline may look different in life. There is unfortunately pretty limited information about the man he was. He was likely in pain due to abscesses found behind his teeth. The victim most likely also ground his teeth. He also may have had a previous injury to his face, resulting in a crooked nose. These would be pre-existing injuries and not something that happened in his final moments. It's possible he had a crooked gait when he walked. 
A belt buckle was found at the scene, as well as blue jeans and one woman's slip-on shoe. It's unsure if any of these items actually belonged to him. It is thought he was either white or Hispanic. He was around 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 6, and he weighed 130 to maybe 150 pounds. His name as file has been removed, which is typically done if a case is resolved. So it's possible he may have been identified and it's not released yet. Hopefully that is the case. When and if that becomes available, I will pin it below the episode. He was 17 to 22 years old when his life was taken. His approximate date of birth would have been 1971 to 1976. He is gone, unidentified, for 28 years. The Shafter Jane Doe, also known as the Elko County Jane Doe, 1993. The Shafter Jane Doe got her name as she was found on November 16, 1993, at the Shafter exit off of Interstate 80 in eastern Elko County, Nevada. Isotope testing was done and it showed she lived her last months of her life in Afton, Wyoming. Afton only has a population of around 2,000 people, so it's really crazy that she wasn't identified, but that was the case. She had been shot twice, once in the chest and once in the back, with a small caliber gun. She suffered facial wounds from being beaten, and there was no sign of any other type of assault. She passed away about a week before she was found. Someone simply dumped her on the side of the road near an off-ramp. Investigators believe she was killed somewhere else, and it's possible her murder is linked to other Great Basin murders that occurred between 1983 and 1987. Dale Wayne Eaton is a murderer on death row in Wyoming. He's been named as a possible suspect in her case. He's currently in prison for killing Lisa Marie Kimmel in 1988, which is a murder that completely rocked my state of Montana at the time. In 2009, isotope testing on a hair sample indicated that she'd lived much of her life in the Southwest. This would include Southern California, New Mexico, and Arizona for the last seven months of her life. Likely that would be April through November 1993. She lived in Afton, Wyoming. The autopsy uncovered that she gave birth at least once, and she suffered from pretty severe endometriosis, which may have been a frequent cause of pain for her. She had a burn scar on her left calf and good dental care. She was currently undergoing the process for a root canal. Her nails had been professionally done. It does not appear she was a drifter and she was well cared for. She appears to be somebody someone would have missed. Unfortunately, leads in her case have been scarce. One took investigators to Sweetwater, Wyoming, where they located a possible missing person, but it ended up not being her. Something investigators took hard, as her lack of identification is not for trying. A former manager at Orvis Outdoor Recreation Store near Jackson, Wyoming, believes he actually might have worked with her. He was able to relate that a woman went missing while he was working there, and he believes the composite photo looks a lot like her. Unfortunately, he has been unable to remember her name, and the records are gone. She was around 5 foot 8 inches tall and 140 pounds. Anyone with information on the Shafter Jane Doe case, please call the Elko County Sheriff at the number given. It is estimated that she was born between 1958 and 1973. Any child she had would be at least 28 years old now or older. She's gone unidentified for 27 years. That's it for today. Thank you everybody for watching and listening. If you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button. Take care of yourselves and each other.